I keep talking to make sure we have audio when the stream comes catches up with reality. And and it does. Yay. I think they fixed that bug. Yay. All right. And Dementia Radio now. And recording in three, two, one. Recorded live on DementiaRadio.org. It's the Funny Music Podcast. Brought to you by TheFunk.com. Where you can download new free comedy songs twice a week. Now, here's your hosts, Devo Spice and the great Luke Ski. Hey, Devo Spice. Hey, Luke Ski. We have Bad Beth is here. Hey, Beth. Hey, how you doing? And we have Tony Goldmark here. And Tony, introduce your friend. And my friend Jacob Martin here, a.k.a. Close to the Sun. Who, who helped me out with the music on the track we'll be playing a little later. <laughs> Excellent. Welcome to episode 707 of the Funny Music Podcast. For Thursday, January 4th, 2024, the title of this week's episode is Large Beneficial Vase, or Vase if you prefer. And your job is to work that into our conversations somehow this evening. Mm. And we totally missed an opportunity. Uh, Tony, you should have like introduced everyone like you do on Escape from Vault Disney <laughs> with like the like big grandiose intros for each person. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I I always write those in advance, and I didn't tonight. So ah. um, can't, no can do. Next sorry. time we'll we'll plan better for next time. Like in next another time, ten years yes. when you release another in song, an, yeah, we'll, exactly. We'll plan. Exactly. But, okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do the catch up thing. This is going to be fun, folks. Let's get caught up with what Devo and Luke have been up to since last week. Or else, Devo, if Luke failed and didn't show up. Hey, what? Oh, he's oh, right. Boy. So, Luke, what you been up to? Well, um, get back to my Google calendar here. Um, yeah, so I'm just sitting here kind of brain fried, uh, yeah, I remember we did. Yeah, uh, we did last week's Fumpcast while I was driving back after visiting Carrie and Alex Ann. That's what happened. Yes. Okay. So yeah, so the day after that, uh, I uh, went and hung out with Stephanie in Madison, which was nice. Uh, we went to see the Disney movie Wish because she hadn't seen it yet, and she enjoyed it. Uh, um, yeah. Um, and let's see. I mean, I just spent. Uh, uh, <laughs> I actually, you know. Uh, I, I've been every time I go out to my, see my family at my, my mom's place. I've been going into the attic and I've been like ripping songs from CDs uh, that are, are that are basically me trying to recreate a series of mixtapes from the you know late two thousands. You know because I don't want to just like completely load all of my CDs in because then I'll run out of space. So it's like I just want these specific tracks so it's like been a project every time i go out there i try to get through as many more of the playlists well i've got down to like two left so on saturday and sunday i finally got through the rest of the tracks on that playlist um one of them included uh like way back in the day tony goldmark made a like his own personal home burned cdr of like 80 tracks of music from the first four seasons of futurama <laughs> oh right i did do that wow yeah because yeah, they I didn't because there was no Futurama soundtrack CD, like there were, for, were like there were a few for The Simpsons, and yeah. yet Futurama did a lot of songs. So I just thought, well, I'll just compile my own home burnt CD of yeah, uh, because of, of you, songs just recorded straight from the show. Yeah, because you were using them on the Looney Bin regularly back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, so, it was. <laughs> so basically, I burned that whole CD, and I just I since none of since the way you know, <laughs> like. It's like I know that you had labeled all those tracks as MP3s. In fact, they're probably on my external drive here, but I wanted to be on the safe side. So while I was out there, I, I burned the whole CD, and then I just had to go through it and like listen to each one and like come up with my own title for it. I mean, mm. the ones that were songs were easy, like "Born to Be a Bureaucrat," fine. But then there's just kind of like you know, uh, <laughs> "Bender Cracked Corn," you know, whatever. You know? <laughs> it's like. So that was fun. So the the fact that I got through the the final list of that like made me feel like you know yes I finally accomplished that. Keep you know. in mind this was only from the first few seasons of Futurama yeah. back when it was still on Fox. Yeah, you know with its seven or eight reboots it's had so far that would probably be like a four disc set at this point. Credit yeah, to so Fire was... Blast Studios in the chat, but you made your own um, CD with Blackjack and Hookers. 
<laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then New Year's Eve, uh, kind of an interesting thing. My aunt um, uh, uh, lives, uh, she, she has a fairly large house in Lake Geneva. Um, and her, her, her son, my cousin Steve, you know, is, is grown up. He's married. He lives in New Jersey now. I, I, forgot what, I forgot to ask what city. He was living in New York. Now he's in Jersey somewhere. Um, and, uh, uh, and my uncle Tony passed away like a year and a half ago. And so it's just her and her dog, Abby. And it's just kind of like a... Always sad to lose a fellow Tony. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Um, And uh, basically, it's she's kind of she's basically uh, planning on selling that house and getting a smaller place to live, just because she doesn't need a house that big anymore. So she wanted to have like a big party there for New Year's Eve and basically have everybody come over and spend the night. So it was like crazy pants because my brother Michael and his wife Anu and the a eight month old son Bodie, you know, they were there. My brother JT, his wife Susan, and you know, seven year old Max was there. They brought their dog Grizz. <laughs> it's like my mom was there, I was there, my sister was there, uh, a couple other of Liz's uh I think it was her brother and his wife were there. It's like it was just like this weird family sleepover pajama party <laughs> night. And it's like, all right, that's you know, that's cool. I mean, I wanna you know, have fun with my aunt too. I mean, cause she's, she's a cool person and you know, et cetera. So I show up there, like me and my mom are kind of like the last people to show up there. And when I walk in, they all start like tooting the making noise. And I'm like, okay, we're nowhere near like midnight, you know, what's going on. And then like, I finally like get all the way in the room and I see they've, uh, my, um, my uh, my cousin's wife, Kisiris, like set up a whole big like happy 50th birthday Luke thing with orange and blue balloons and, you know, <laughs> chrome streamers and stuff like that. So basically it was like my mom trying to have a pseudo mini 50th birthday party for me, you know, <laughs> while I'm still in town because they aren't going to be able to come Aww. out here and see me on my actual birthday. So, That's awesome. So that was sweet of them. Uh, Very you know, cool. They, 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 uh, my mom, you know, she, I don't, not that I really care about like gifts or whatever. My mom found a couple of gifts to give me outside of the Christmas gifts. She already gave me a few days earlier, like, like a, like a, a, a Scooby-Doo mystery machine t-shirt and uh, like an orange pair of shorts and I don't know, some other stuff. And I got some like Amazon gift cards and AMC gift cards and stuff. So, but yeah, so it was interesting spending a, a new year's Eve with my family. Um, <laughs> um and then, yeah, oh, and then on Monday, uh, uh, just because I still happen to be in town, um, Monday is the birthday of Mr. Insane Ian, his 45th birthday, and he and Sarah put together a, a whole thing going to Medieval Times in Schaumburg, which I'd never, I've never been to a Medieval Times before. I mean, I know what they are, and I just never got around to seeing that show, because, I don't know, I guess it wasn't enough of an interesting poll for me. But um, the, the were... cable guy wasn't a compelling enough advertisement. For yes, it. basically. <laughs> I just like, watched that movie yesterday, actually. <laughs> like once I saw the cable guy, I kind of felt. Like, yeah, once I saw the cable guy, I was kind of like, all right, I now know the gist of what this thing is, and I don't right. necessarily need to pay fifty-two dollars to go see it or whatever. So, but you that's know, it's I, it's tacky, but it's tacky fun. I, I uh, yeah yeah. I, I, a few years ago, um, actually, right before the pandemic hit. Uh, me and a few friends celebrated Mars Girl's birthday there, uh, <laughs> our, our friend Kalen. So that, that was fun. <laughs> I yeah, went there, so- what is it, in high school, actually, the first time. And immediately, my friend and I, the first thing we did, we walked inside and we immediately burst into the Knights of the Round Table for Money Python and the Mars <laughs> Of course, of course. Yeah, if, if you've never, uh, Wyatt Cenac, uh has a, had a really great bit about medieval times about a a a friend of his who wanted to go who said what do you want to do for your birthday i want to go to medieval times which i thought meant i want to build a time machine (laughs) how does that work no uh, no, why why is why is it a castle no one's trying to attack lindhurst new jersey you know it's (laughs) anyway (laughs) my favorite wyatt Sinek joke was is was um like you know I was, I was, I, I think it was like talking about Brooklyn. I'm pretty sure he's like, um, when I was a baby, you know, I, I, I've lived in Brooklyn, man. The whole place has changed. Like, you know, down the block on the corner, there was this large amorphous blob, you know, <laughs> and now, and now it's a Chipotle. <laughs> it's getting all gentrified. <laughs> uh, 
speaking speaking of why it's an act, just because why 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 shouldn't we be this why far not? off the rails this far into the friggin' show? There is a uh, holiday movie on um, Amazon Prime, one of the ones that you know uh, David Zaslav you know decided wasn't worth the eh. money or whatever. So Amazon picked it up because they're smart. Uh, it is called um, Urkel Saves Santa, the movie. So it's mm. a Steve Urkel holiday movie. <laughs> um and uh it's it's quite fun and it was written by Wyatt Cenac. Oh, so, was it? Okay. okay. Yeah. So Okay, that might make me check it out. Yeah. Then. I was yeah, going to say a tolerable Urkel thing. That's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 interesting. Well, anyway, it's <laughs> I I'm pretty sure I talked about it on the last uh or, or wait, or maybe I didn't talk you did. about it because yeah, I hadn't seen it yet. Cuz I've heard yeah. about it. You did talk about it. <laughs> Although, yeah. Otherwise I never would have heard about it. Yeah. So anyway, um, back to what I was talking about. Uh, this was in medieval times, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So uh, 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 Ian invited a bunch of people, so I got to see. Uh, um, uh, I saw Jared Perez and uh, 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 um, Josh and Carrie and Alex Ann came out, and like when we, uh, you know, grabbed our like when we were getting seats in our little area. You know, I got there before they did, so I kind of saved three seats next to me for them. So, uh, so Alex Ann was next to me, you know, for the whole show and, and she was captivated, you know, by it, <laughs> mainly by how it, one of the very first things that happens, this guy comes out on a horse and he's doing his speech and the horse starts pooping, <laughs> <laughs> like not in any like major, like, you know, like, you know, like over the top right, thing. Right, it right. just, it's a horse poop. It's casually. what horses do. Right. So, <laughs> so then for like the next 10, 15 minutes, that's all. Alex Ann could be concerned with is like, you know, like other actors or horses start coming out like, watch out, there's poop there. It's like we were we were fairly far up, so they wouldn't have heard us at all. But it, but I was just trying to I didn't have the time to explain to her. It's like the whole thing is just a big, like circular sand pit. It's like it's like a cat box. It's like they've designed it to make it not an issue. It's fine. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it was it was a neat show. Like it, it takes a while to kind of get you know, get into gear and like where they finally start doing the battles and stuff. So, but yeah, that was a neat. And, you know, I, that, mu that must have been, that must have been the nice thing about shooting Holy Grail is coconuts don't shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think that's the best, like, uh, out of context thing. Yeah, you, you're, sure you don't want, you're sure you don't want to make coconuts don't shit the title of this episode, <laughs> Devo? Are you, sure? are you, <laughs> you suggesting that, are you suggesting that coconuts don't shit? <laughs> Never mind migration. Are you suggesting that they don't shit? <laughs> By the way, what's what's coconut milk really made out of? If coconuts oh, don't, God. then what's in the milk? I just I'm just saying, you know. Well, that's another thing I'll never drink again. Uh, Say anyway. note to self: don't buy an almond joy. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, sometimes you feel like a nut, but anyway, I was waiting for that. So. <laughs> So anyway, um, yeah. Then I and then the day after that, I ended up, you know, flying back, and I've been working my dumb day job. I finally got out to get a little bit of shopping done, and um, and I found this at the store. I'm I'm holding up a visual thing for those listening. Can you see who this is? This action figure. Is it Agatha all along? Yes, it is Agatha Harkness. Agatha, it is Agatha all along. I found this at Target because I absolutely love. Uh, content that features an Agatha. So mm. if I mean, if somebody <laughs> dropped some new content that featured an Agatha today, I probably would have listened to it like four times by now. Yeah, so yeah. I approve I, I, I of imagine, all content that has an Agatha in it. Yes. So what an odd rubric, but I approve <laughs> <yes>. of it. <laughs> so what have you been up to, Devo Spice? Uh, have you listened to any content that has an, an Agatha in it? <laughs> Not today, no, but I have in the past. Um, so I usually try to keep this, in the future. this segment short so we can talk to the artist, but fuck that for right now. <laughs> um, You're talking to the artist anyway. Yeah. Who cares? So New Year's is traditionally just a, a, such a non-holiday for me. Like, I don't give two shits about New Year's at all. I don't drink. I don't party. So, like, I don't go out and get, get shit-faced and, you know. So, like, I don't care about New Year's. And, like, my tradition is 
I sit on the couch, I play Mario Kart until like 11.58, and then I put on the ball drop, and I watch the ball drop, and then I go back to Mario Kart. That's what I do on New Year's Eve. <laughs> this year, I didn't even do that. Um, this year, um, I wanted to go to um, Great Adventure, the Six Flags Park here in New Jersey, um, because I was off the week between Christmas and New Year's, and I was like, one of these days, I want to go to Great Adventure, because they have the park you know, decorated for the holidays, and get one last, you know, batch of roller coasters in before they close for the season. And I didn't get to go during the week. So I was like, screw it. I'll, you know, I'm going to, I'll go Sunday. So New Year's Eve, I was in, I was at great adventure. Now they don't, they weren't open late. They closed at eight and I didn't even stay until they closed. So I was home by like nine o'clock. And then I remembered I had to do manic Mondays. (laughs) <laughs> I had completely forgotten about it. So I emailed Mike, who Mike Bolly from 2D Sick, not 2D Sick, from Two Sleeps, who usually edits the show for me. And I was like, dude, I'll take care of the show this week. You know, Happy New Year. And so at the stroke of midnight, I was editing my podcast. So that's what I was doing. <laughs> um, so so that was my New Year's. That and that's that's all there was to, was to New Year's. Now, I don't know anything about editing my podcast at all hours of the night. That's a completely foreign concept to me. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. The, the other big news in my life is our car insurance renewed for another term on January 1st. And last week, I got a notice from Geico about our new rates. Those of you who have been playing along all year know that my son had two accidents. Uh, one mm. where he totaled my car in September and then back in July, he just he scraped a pole. It wasn't a big deal. Um, but that they're counting that as two at-fault accidents. So my insurance rate went from $269 a month to $1,230 a month. And I went, Jesus. no. No, 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 no. We can't do that. <laughs> it's, it's like, I looked at our budget and I just went, no. So I called around. I called every insurance company I could find. I got quotes from every place online and nobody else wants to insure us at all. So I'm stuck with Ugh. Geico. So I Jesus. I went, the only thing we could do was I jacked up our, our deductibles to get so I, I managed to get the premium down to a thousand dollars a month so hey. uh, yeah <laughs> so I, I we're considering you know doing a whole bunch of stuff to try to try to save some money but that kind of became a moot point today um maybe you should like you know when you find spare change like put it in a jar and like have it accumulate and then when the jar is full, you can cash it in, so it would be like a large beneficial vase. That's why I love you guys. <laughs> well, we did it. I think, I think I've got Good a night, Geico. Uh, right, we can all go home now. I got a Geico uh, insurance guy in, in here. Let me let me see if I can if I can get him here. It's, oh, where are you? There you are. He's wait, wait, he, he's coming. Just wait. Let's tell you, don't go all argy bargy as. Oh my God, he's jacked up too. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Horrifying. Yeah. Worthy of Spielberg. 15% can save you. From... Ah! So, all right. Different topic, better That's story. Even worse. That's yeah. So much worse, Luke. Oh, you guys, that was. I think my butt hurts a little bit. This is, it's not a, a bad. My cold liquor hurts. <laughs> So, um, are you guys familiar with the band Scatterbrain? Not Great really. not. Okay. Personally not. They were a metal band, like a speed metal band in the in the early 90s. Uh, they came out of uh, the New York City hardcore scene. They were originally called Ludacrist. And oh, they okay. had a um, minor hit. It got, it got some play on MTV. It was called Don't Call Me Dude. Um, I have played their stuff on Manic Mondays over the years. Um they were a band with a sense of humor. They didn't go all on all out comedy in every song, but they did, you know, they did have a sense of humor. They did work it into their songs. They did a cover of Earache My Eye by Cheech and Chong, just, oh, just, cool, cool. just the metal part, not the spoken part. <laughs> um, so that was kind of what they did. And then they got dropped by their label and kind of went their separate ways and, you know, haven't done much since. 
Um, I did see them. Um, the the guy they reformed as Ludacrist, and I saw them perform last summer in New York City, which was you know at a s- small club and small like punk rock club in New York. It was great. So the guitarist from Scatterbrain has been posting a lot of like old photos and stuff that he's found on on on, on Facebook, and so. You know, we've kind of been talking a little bit about like things from, you know, memories from from back then and stuff. And he posted like out of the blue that Scatterbrain apparently recorded 18 songs that nobody has ever heard. And they were going to like they pitched it to Electra Records as like their next album. And um, and, and <laughs> Electra basically went. This stuff is terrible. Don't ever play this for anyone else. And then promptly dropped them. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, but he's, but he played one of the, he posted one of the songs and I'm like, this is fucking great. I mean, it's, it's scatterbrain, you know? So I kind of half heartedly said, have I'm like, I'm like, Hey, please tell me you're going to release this stuff somehow. If not, I sort of run a label if you want me to release it for you. And he's like, <laughs> he, re- he responded to me and he says, yeah, let me know what you have in mind. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> So my brain has been churning. Um, I haven't reached out to him yet because I want to try to get some more ducks in a row before I do. But um, so I've been talking to the the singer of the the guitarist from Scatterbrain about possibly releasing some unreleased music. And then um, my friend Steve. Oh, what happened was I tagged my friend Steve. Steve was one of the original sudden death guys. He was known as Piles back in the day. And he was another huge Scatterbrain fan. And, like, uh, the two of us went to see Scatterbrain, you know, back in 1991. It was either late 90 or early 91 at, a, like, a small club in Connecticut. Um, so I tagged Steve in the post because I was like, you need to hear this song. It's new Scatterbrain, basically. So he got involved in the conversation, and he mentioned... um our cover of the scatterbrain song down with the ship, which I included on fatal accident zone (laughs) and Glenn, the guitarist from scatterbrain was like, is this available to listen to anywhere? Cause I kind of want to hear it. And I was (laughs) like, well, it's on Spotify along with all the uncleared samples that are in the song. (laughs) (laughs) And so I I posted it and the guitarist from Scatterbrain listened to it and he was like this is amazing I love it and then made a separate post sharing my cover of of Down with the Ship. So nice. I've kind of been like in Scatterbrain mode today. So there's just a fun little little side thing about the uh, that uh may not come to anything but it was it was just a, a fun little interaction I had today. And the other thing that happened today is I got up, I got online, and there's an email from our brand new uh, CEO at our company who's been on the job all of two and a half weeks. And he says, you know, blah, 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 due to economy, losing clients, we've had to let go an additional 37 people. If you've been affected, you already have a meeting on the books with um, HR and your manager. And I look, and there's a meeting with HR and my manager, and I went, motherfucker. So I got laid off today. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Um, sorry. The good news is they're giving me like five months of severance pay. So I'm, I'm not in any, you know, I'm not in panic mode at, at the moment or anything. But still, it's like, yeah, I've been with this company almost eight years. I oh. built the development department, me and my old manager. I was the first developer they ever hired. I was the only developer for who worked there for like five years. And then in the last like three years, we brought on some additional developers. And, and me and one of the other developers were let go today. I don't know who the hell is going to do the work that's in the shop, but it ain't going to be me. So, Ugh. I'm I, just saying, Diego, there are, very, there are very few problems that you can't solve with uh, some lie on a shovel, if you know what I mean. Uh, yes. Give me names. I'll, I'll, I'll give you some names. We'll, I'll, we'll be in touch. Uh, yeah, I just want to <laughs> hurt their feelings. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it's been a day. <laughs> so I, I'm going to take 
I, I took like today and tomorrow to just veg and do nothing and like mourn basically. And then take, I'll take, I'm going to take the weekend and then Monday I will start, you know, trying to find a new job. I've actually already reached out to a couple of old colleagues who I used to work with. Um, and they, they've asked for my resume. So I've already got some, some things happening. Um, the other thing I may do is I may try doing like a live stream on Twitch of just me doing some performance type stuff. Um, if I decide to do that, I'll let, I will send out an email about it so that people come. It'll probably be either Monday night or Tuesday night, probably around this same time. Um, if you think that'd be something you'd be interested in watching, let me know. Um, cause I have no idea if, I, if, you know, I could, I could be rapping and nobody could be watching, you know, who, who knows? <laughs> so that's the title of your new album. Rap like no one is watching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the the other possible title was "Farting into the Wind," which is kind of the same thing. So, <laughs> farting into the void. <laughs> exactly. If you fart into the abyss, the wind hits you back. <laughs> I was gonna say, does the abyss fart back? Yeah. <laughs> if you stare into the abyss, another another <laughs> excellent alternate title: "Does the abyss fart back?" <laughs> That's just just consider it. Just. My favorite Star Wars movie, Star Wars Episodes Five: The, the Abyss, Abyss Farts Back. back. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so Beth, what have you been up the, the to? James, the James Cameron sequel that we didn't ask for, but we probably deserve. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so Beth, what have you been up to? Well, you know, uh, I I just put out this uh, soothing meditation. You know, I've been into into all kinds of things like. Uh, more of that new agey shit, you know, because with the soothing meditation, I figured, you know, I can start going down that road. I'm going to go from, at first I thought I'll go from bad Beth and beyond to more of a new age thing. Like, you know, crystal Beth. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. People, I people like might it. find that shit kind of addictive, you know? So, so that's what I've been true on. Just trying to get people to fucking relax. <laughs> You know, that's what this that's what this is all about. You know, you're going to be so relaxed. You're going to be just all your muscles are going to be stretched. You are going to be stretched out like a vase. I love it. <laughs> so that's, you know, I'm, I'm looking into the eightfold path of enlightenment and, and, and all that shit. You know, so far, you know, I, I, I've gotten way past the eightfold path of enlightenment i'm I'm up to like the 68th uh, something between the 68th and the 70th i don't know uh something like that <laughs> but, uh, there's something, nice. something like that but you know I'm, I'm doing all this new age oogity boogity bug fuck shit you know and, and uh i don't know if i feel any better but I, I hear that that uh just by sheer willpower and manifesting things in your mind it can cure everything from a broken bone to a severed head so you know, Excellent. Tony, didn't you uh, didn't you used to play bass for Oogity Boogity Bug Fuck? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We we opened for Coconuts Don't Shit. <laughs> yeah, that, that, I, that's right. Back in like '83, I saw your guys' show, The Abyss Farts Back. Right. <laughs> so that was a concept album we did. Uh, it so it was it, it 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 was that that benefit concert for for large vases. Mm. Large vosses for broken large vosses, yeah. yeah, to try to glue them back together again. Yeah. It'll be beneficial. So we will. We, we will come back. Successful. We will come back to <laughs> to Beth's uh, meditation. Uh, Tony and Jacob, what have you guys been up to? Well, for the last ten years since I was yeah. on this well, particular ca podcast, catch us up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I uh, did another season of Some Jerk with a Camera, and then. Uh, and then a few, uh, and then some other videos for a few years. And then in 2019, I started a podcast called Escape from Vault Disney, which is still running literally to this very day. I just released the most recent episode on this very day. Um, it, it's, it's a show where me and my guests review movies, TV shows, and short films available on Disney Plus, usually chosen almost completely at random. Uh, Jacob's been on it. Luke's been on it a lot. 
Uh, Devo was just recently on a Christmas episode mm-hmm. where we covered Disney Holiday Magic Quest, yes, which was a bizarre, <laughs> pointless COVID era <laughs> Disney Channel game show special from 2020, where it really the was. Of- <laughs> the cast of Disney Channel's Zombies movies had to run around Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom at night after hours and complete a bunch of meaningless tasks to, quote, bring back the holiday magic, which had just been stolen by Maleficent and the Evil Queen for completely unrevealed reasons. It was uh, not good. No. And, they were kind of uh, out of the abyss, far, if the abyss farts back. That's right, what they right, stole right. it for. Exactly. And it's like, I, I've that era of time... I wish that there had been like a separate, like, you know, like there's the Emmy Awards or whatever. I wish there would have been like a separate award show for, you know, best, you know, like, like the, the best examples of making the best of the bad situation, which was, you know, the whole right. COVID thing. Like, like all the, all the shows that were produced then, which were, which were they, <laughs> which productions were able to actually come up with something decent and entertaining to watch despite having to do all these limitations? Cause I, you know, Given the situation, you know, I thought that was a fairly decent attempt at doing a thing. <laughs> it was, it, it was, it, 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 it had, it, it had its moments of charm, I suppose. But ultimately, I don't think it really worked. Mainly because it seemed like they were ashamed to just make it a game show. Yeah, to yeah. just make it, we're playing games because of the game show. They had to add all that lore chicanery with Maleficent and the Evil Queen stealing the holiday magic, which was just nonsense. But uh, but but the episode was fun. We did that with Devo and um, uh, and and uh, and who who were the other two guests? I, I, oh, uh, I forgot. Veronica I, was right, yes, Veronica Vex and Zach Hurst. Yes. Those were the other two guests. Yes, uh, the brains frazzled. Sorry. And <laughs> just last night, uh, shortly after midnight, I finally publicly released our belated second Christmas episode of this winter season, because it's not even the same year anymore, uh, where we covered the Arendelle Castle Yule Log Cut Paper Edition, which was, of course, a completely, perfectly normal episode where me and David Ganzel and Kyle Carosa and Morgan Funder spent an hour and ten minutes earnestly discussing one of the two Yule Logs on Disney Plus that are themed to the movie Frozen. So listen to that if you want a completely, perfectly normal conversation for 70 minutes. Yes, and- it is, I've listened to it four times, and it is a completely, completely normal show. <laughs> Mm-hmm. There's nothing unique or wacky about nothing it ever. Whatsoever. Nope. Not at all. And I am currently hard at work on editing the next episode, which will be another belated Christmas episode and a belated Halloween episode where we cover Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. That oh, will nice. hopefully be ready uh, sometime. Definitely not this weekend. Hopefully next weekend. Cool. So Excellent. So... Let's get to some music. You guys and, posted and, and a ja- song. And Jacob, what have you been up to? Hey, Jacob, Sorry, yeah. I, I, I suppose you want me to tell you guys what I've been up to. How far back do you want to go? Well, I've let's let's start with who the hell back, are you? Because so. you've never been on the show yeah. before. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am an electronic musician. I've been doing that for about 10 years. Uh, just over 10 years, actually. The Last month, I released a 10th anniversary live album. On the 10th anniversary of my first ever performance, it was called Live in the Moment. And then, what, that was a recording from a 10th anniversary concert that I did in June that was just a fun show that I had wanted to do forever. I have a big plywood pentagon that I built in Woodshop in high school (laughs) because my logo was just a white pentagon. And I'm a big Daft Punk nerd. So I'm like, well, they have a pyramid. That's a triangle. Dead Mouse has a cube. That's four. So I'll be the fifth. I'll make my Pentagon. And that just sort of became my thing. So I did a whole show inside of a big plywood Pentagon and released the audio from it last month. As far as, like, this project, I'm sure we'll get more into the beginnings of how this specific song came about later. But recently I've started doing um, more less electronic focused stuff and more just soundtrack type things. Mm. I started um, that started with I was 
bored and was like, you know what? My hometown roller coaster, why don't I make a soundtrack for it? Fuck it. Who's going to, you know what I mean? Sure, the park will never use it, but fuck it. Why not? <laughs> and then that blossomed into now I've soundtracked what? Like at least 13 or 14 different attractions, some of which already have soundtracks. So, you know, like I've learned the hardships of trying to compete with Michael Giacchino's Space Mountain score. I don't recommend it. It's very difficult to do. I, you're not going <laughs> to beat it. <laughs> and um, other than that, you know, it's just... hard to. It, it must be hard to score a roller coaster just to bring your keyboard onto the thing and, and <laughs> strap it in to while you're and, and and actually play it and work out the melody while it's going all around. That must be. Rough. It takes, you know, it just some practice. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it? So now that I've started doing that more, um, recently I was also involved last year in some Agatha content, actually. Ooh. Um, on a friend, uh, Chandler, on podcast without a cool acronym, we reviewed every single episode of Tron Uprising. Which oh is a very good show with the most frustrating ending you'll ever watch. Because <laughs> <laughs> Thanks is it, for that, is it, Disney. Is it because they were expecting to have another season and weren't given yep. one? Oh, they were yeah. expecting another season, but Disney said, you know what, we're going to put Ugh. this on our paywall service and air new episodes at like 11 o'clock on Thursday mm. nights. So no one watched it. And then, of course, surprise, surprise, not enough viewership numbers for a season two. So season one ends with, you know, the uprising has begun. End credits. <laughs> <laughs> Cliffhanger and the execs are like, okay, we're good. Yeah. No! Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that uh, was. See, also, I grew up in the 80s with, with Sledgehammer uh, blowing up New York State as uh, blowing oh, yeah. up New York City as a, as a cliffhanger. <laughs> Yeah, and then when they came back for the next season, they basically said that the next season was like a prequel season. Yeah, it took place like five years before or something like that. <laughs> it's like, those are the biggest cop the, out ever. You know what the, the you know what happens in the last Tron. episode of ALF? I No, I don't think well, I do. Well, that's where they all end up in jail, right? Well, basically, it's like uh, ALF's, like, you know, alien, you know, friends and stuff are going to, like, come to Earth and, like like, finally rescue him. And they like go to some field, but then like you know the the military or whatever shows up, and then his friends like are like you know oh crap, and they bug out, and then basically Alf and the family get captured by like you know whatever the army you know end of episode. That's how Alf ends. <laughs> oh, well, but it, it gets they they end up with like Jerry Seinfeld and Elaine and Kramer. Right, and they're all like thrown in the same all movie. in the same cell together. Yes. Yes. Years well, later, then, they made a. There was a straight to TV movie. I forgot for, for what network. I think like the USA Network, and it was called Project Alf, where it was like right. it was kind of like Sergeant Bilko. It was like Alf in, uh, you know, some army base somewhere, and he's basically kind of you know running gambling things and stuff. But the family's completely gone. They basically put the family in like witness protection program, and they're not in the picture anymore. <laughs> anyway, so, so other than uh, what is it? I may or may not be doing uh, more Agatha scoring more Agatha based content in the oh. Tron universe. However, mm. the Tron universe right now hangs in the in the wings with uh, Mr. Jared Leto. So I have oh, high hopes yeah. for that movie, but I, I want to watch it for Tron, not for Jared Leto. <laughs> Yeah, Other just like me with the Haunted Mansion movie this past yeah, exactly. year. Yeah, exactly. Jared Leto was in for no goddamn reason. I'm cause... pretty sure he was in it because Tron. They want to see if they'll yeah. see a movie despite Jared Leto, not for Jared Leto. And he didn't. And, and people didn't. That movie flopped. So why are they going forward with the... I don't know. Doesn't I don't make... know, but I'm hoping it works because... He's, he's got incriminating Polaroids of Bob Iger or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> well, I know he's the one bankrolling Tron 3. That's the thing. Oh, is he? Okay. Yeah, cool. he's a big Tron fan, so he's like, well, I'll make Ooh, the third boy. movie. And he has the money and clout to actually pull oh, it off. So now he's doing so. Which okay. it's actually shooting you know, a few hours away from me, so I may or may not try to be an extra when that actually starts filming. Oh, wow. Because that would I, be the biggest bragging right for a Tron fan. <laughs> I don't know if I ever told you about this, but um, at 
at I was um I attended WonderCon 2010 in the San Francisco Bay Area where they were promoting Tron Legacy heavily and they actually shot a uh, bonus uh, a, a bonus feature for the um for the Blu-ray uh where you can see me in the background. It's like yeah, it's like yeah, a presentation. Yeah, I heard about that on Twitter. Yeah, yeah, someone noticed me in that thing and actually said, hey, "Is that you?" And I was like, "Oh, that's what that was for. That was for a blue <laughs> It was some of it. they wouldn't tell us what exactly it was for cuz it was supposedly this in universe thing, probably but, something yeah, for can... Ncom, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and 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 Ncom presentation they actually had what's the actor's name who played the the guy? I I I've who seen plays Tron. Tron? No, not Tron, but the um Oh, the, the guy Flynn? who runs the company, no, no, not not Flynn, but the guy who worked with him, the um, Bruce Boxleitner. Bruce, Bruce yeah. yes, Bruce yeah, that Boxleitner. is Tron. They actually... Tron himself is Bruce oh, okay, Boxleitner. Okay, yeah, yeah, but they had his real world character, like in character. Yeah, they had Alan the Bradley. Actor, Alan Bradley giving a giving a speech, and and I was in the audience of that speech, and uh, and so you can see me in the in the audience in the special features. See, so. funny enough, like I am enough of a Tron nerd that I was at D23 um, the last time they did it. I got to, not only did I meet uh, Bruce Boxleitner, but yeah. I met him in a custom Tron suit. Ah, uh, cool. <laughs> and then I flew down to Florida to be there for the opening day of the ride. So, oh, of and I'm praying that comes to California because. West Coast needs a new I don't know. Goddamn I don't know if we have the space for it. Maybe, maybe in that area. Maybe if you tear down the submarines and the monorail, you could put it like in that area. Oh yeah, the actual the show building. The actual show building fits about the same plot of land as the um, former Carousel of Progress. It fits the mm. same spot. Oh, okay. Well, the problem is then that big giant canopy. Which right, right, right. If right. you ask me, the canopy would replace the people mover. It would go out over the land, and you'd walk in under it. But that's yeah, that, you know, that could work. Blue I mean, sky. It, yeah, the, it, it, it could work. They should really get rid of those people mover tracks anyway. Yeah, they really need who to. needs to be reminded. Anyway, I know. Welcome to yeah. Tony and Jacob. We've turned your podcast fil- into a theme park. <laughs> theme parks podcast. Yeah. <laughs> to finish up, what I've done recently, I went to work. I. Um, was in a Christmas parade in my local area for like the seventh time, and uh, I've been doing music stuff. Nice. That's what I've been up to. Is there some place we can listen to some of the stuff that, like the you you said you scored a roller coaster? Is there like a video of the roller coaster with your music so, to it? Yes, all of those are on my YouTube channel, which is going to be at RCT Three is Epic. Everybody gets it wrong the first few times. Right. It's Roller Coaster Tycoon Three is Epic. Okay. Yeah, I've done, like, I know I did Space Mountain, West Coast Racers at Magic Mountain. Um, I did one, like, really recently. I've done a lot of virtual stuff as well, but yeah, that's what I've been up to. Cool. I will check that out. All right. So you guys posted a song. Give us a, a quick introduction. We'll play it, and then we'll talk to you about it. Well, this, of course, is available on the... Amazing new Fump Tom Lehrer tribute compilation CD. The Fump desecrates Tom Lehrer. And it's my cover, and it's me and Jacob's delightful little cover of Tom Lehrer's Ode to Death, Destruction, and the End of the World. One of the many odes to those topics that Tom Lehrer (laughs) delightfully wrote and recorded. It is a little song called We Will All Go Together When We Go. When you attend a funeral, it is sad to think that sooner or later those you love will do the same for you. And you may have thought it tragic, not to mention other adjectives to think of all the weeping they will do. But don't you worry. No more ashes, no more sackcloth, and an armband made of black cloth will someday never more adorn a sleeve. For if the bomb that drops on you gets your friends and neighbors too, there'll be nobody left behind to grieve, and we will all go together when we go. What a comforting fact that is to know 
Universal bereavement and inspiring achievement. Yes, we all will go together when we go. We will all go together when we go. All suffused with an incandescent glow. No one will have the endurance to collect on their insurance. Lloyds of London will be loaded when they go. Oh, we will all fry together when we fry. We'll be French fried potatoes by and by. There will be no more misery when the world is our rotisserie. Yes, we all will fry together when we fry. Maelstrom There'll be a storm Before the calm Then we will all bake together When we bake There'll be nobody Present at the wake With complete participation In that grand incineration Over eight billion hunks Of well done steak A TDM when you see that ICPM, and the party will be come as you are. Oh, we will all burn together when we burn. There'll be no need to stand and wait your turn when it's time for the fallout. And St. Peter calls us all out. We'll just drop our agendas and adjourn. You will all go directly to your respective. Valhalla's go directly, do not pass, go, do not collect two hundred dollars. And we will all go together when we go. Every billionaire and every average Joe. When the air becomes Uranus, we will all go simultaneous. Yes, we all will go together when we all go. Yes, we all will go together when we go. Can Love we talk it. yet? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you <laughs> It would have so been for... it, I, I, I can't. I only thought of this this minute. It would have been fun if when it came back to us, uh, the video, we were all just skeletons or something. <laughs> <laughs> just plastic great. skeletons. You like can fix that in post, can't yeah. you, Devo? <laughs> See, sure, all that not? requires planning, which we don't do a lot of for yes, this of podcast. Course. So, <laughs> yeah. What is it with me being on podcast with Tony and having plastic skeletons somehow yes. get involved? He was on he was on oh, an episode we shit. did about a year I... ago on Home Alone 2 <laughs> Lost in New York. Yeah. I have a life size skeleton upstairs that my wife made me buy for Halloween. Oh, well. I could have just put <laughs> it here well. and yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. we always have our best ideas too late. Don't so we? So, we will all go together when we go. The last track prior you know, just before not counting jello shots on right. on the album because i thought it would be i thought it was a perfect place for it i thought it was a good you know grand finale type track i love the way this came yeah, out I, I absolutely it, it, and of course it was the final track on uh tom lehrer's second album an evening wasted with tom lehrer because yeah. because how do you top the end of the world <laughs> right. obviously um but yeah, I've been a huge Tom Lehrer fan uh, ever since even before I was a Dr. Demento fan, possibly even before I was a Weird Al fan. My love of Tom Lehrer was hereditary. My grandparents on my mother's side uh, had several Tom Lehrer albums on vinyl when my mom was growing up. And when my mom was just a little girl, they used to teach her his songs and she'd sing them at dinner parties to amuse their friends and such. And uh and I remember when I was a little kid, my very first exposure ever to Mr. Lehrer's Muse was when a little movie called The Lion King came out, and I saw it with my grandparents. And of course, Scar's big villain song in The Lion King is called Be Prepared. 
And on the car ride home, <laughs> my grandpa said, you know, there's another song called Be Prepared by this guy, Tom Lehrer. And he sang a verse or two for me. And uh, again, speaking of having our best ideas too late, that would have been a fun idea for this album is to do Tom Lehrer's Be Prepared in the style of the Lion King's Be Prepared. With, oh, with a, yeah. Affecting a Jeremy Irons voice like, keep your reefers wind where you're sure that they will not be found. It, it's a, that, would, that would have been fun. Oh, well, <laughs> never looked back. But, Get Jim Cummings on the phone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, then a couple years later, I must have been 11 or 12 or something, and I guess my mom realized, well, you know, Tony's old enough to appreciate some slightly darker, more twisted stuff. And she told me about Tom Lehrer and sang uh, the Irish ballad and I Hold Your Hand in Mind and the hunting song to me. And I just thought they were the funniest, sickest, most brilliantly written songs I'd ever heard. And I think... That year for my birthday or something, or Hanukkah or something, she bought me uh, the CDs of all three Tom Lehrer live albums, Revisited, Evening Wasted, and that was the year that was. And I just devoured them. I just listened to them over and over and over again. Uh, and and I just loved them. Even when I didn't quite get all the dirty jokes and 50s and 60s topical humor. I mean, you know, what 12-year-old knows who right. Werner Von Braun is. Right, you know? exactly. But, <laughs> um but but I was still always just so taken by the quality of the songwriting and the clever rhymes. And that was very much the case with We Will All Go Together When We Go, that which was a song I always loved, despite not really knowing at first what, what it was about or what it referred to, because I wasn't really cognizant at that age of the history of the Cold War and the nuclear arms race and, you know, the mounting global paranoia of mutually assured destruction. But... I still loved like the sheer cleverness of rhyming funeral with sooner or later, which is, is still a, a rhyme that kind of breaks my brain. It's so brilliant. It's and it's not even a slant rhyme, really, because all the syllables do fit each other. Yeah. But one line just has a couple extras or rhyming misery with rotisserie or uranius with simultaneous. What was it? Yeah, dollars. Valhalla with yeah. two hundred dollars. Yeah, that, yeah, that, that was that's the one that the, something other the something rather tragic. Not to mention other adjectives. adjectives. To the, yeah, it, it, it's so it's so amazing the way he constructed these things and uh, and and his and, style and of writing like that has been very influential on my own. Like, oh, definitely. Uh, there, you definitely. know, when I'm trying to come up with rhymes for something difficult where there's not really a lot of obvious rhymes to it. I kind of take a, you know, take a play out of his book when he like deconstructs the word and puts other words in there, of course. To, you know, put the yeah, rhymes and, together. And of course, as I grew older and I did learn much more about the song's historical context, I just gained so much more appreciation for it because yeah, if literally all of humanity was suddenly wiped out with absolutely no survivors, that would be an upside of it, wouldn't it? Is, is no one's around to grieve anymore. No one would be left behind to know what they were missing. So the man sarcastically found a way to write a po what he called a positive, dynamic, uplifting song about the apocalypse. And uh, and you got to love him for it. So, so when Luke told me that you were thinking about putting this album together, I knew I wanted to contribute to it. I didn't know if I'd be able to, but I knew I wanted to. And this was always my first choice for which song to cover because I, I don't know if it's his all-time best song just because it has an insane amount of competition but i do feel like it might be a single most underrated song just because it's as brilliant as it is with and and um and 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 also i've i've, I've also been i've always been a little disappointed with the orchestral version of we will all go together when we go. I mean, I mean, it's. I don't think it's bad, but at, of the four Tom Lehrer songs that got re-recorded with an orchestra in, I want to say, 1960, I always thought um, we will all go together when we go was the weakest and least impressive recording because not only did they shorten it rather needlessly, I thought, but um, they also didn't really do anything with it besides just put kind of a generic orchestra behind it. Um, on Evening Wasted, when Tom introduced the song, he said that it was written in the tradition of the great old revival hymns, or rather, it, this was a survival mm -hmm. hymn. So I always thought the best way to cover it would be in the style of a New Orleans jazz band, because because musically, the song it always reminded me most of, more than anything, was When the Saints Go Marching In, 
So I thought New Orleans jazz band would be perfect uh, and, and would be the most natural direction for it. And of course, when you really want to capture the sound of New Orleans jazz, who better to hire than a house musician from Seattle? So, so that's where Jacob <laughs> comes in. <laughs> so like hey, so Beth, Beth, yeah. you've been doing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, I, I got it because you know that's that's what we do down here. Is like, what happens when there's a funeral? We have a parade. Of course. So why not a parade for a funeral for everyone? You know. Yeah. You get a parade and you get a parade and you, oh shit, now we got to pay the band and everybody's dead. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Including um, the band, so. Yeah, well, yeah, that solves that problem. I um, played plenty of gigs when I was half dead anyway. I might as well be all dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Jacob here has been recording various pieces of music for my podcast, Escape from Vault Disney, for several years now. Uh, and in the past... You know, before my 10-year hiatus, when I recorded comedy music, I always did so up in San Francisco with my mom and then my dad as my producers, basically, because they have connections to musicians. Um, I, I didn't want to travel up there and go through the whole process of, of all that just for one song, and I, and I didn't have any other songs to record. So this seemed like the right time to hire Jacob to accompany me musically for a whole song. So... So Jacob, um, what, what was your experience working with me? I guess. <laughs> so this, um, what is it? You sent me this request. I mm -hmm. was, um, fly I was in LA cause I was flying down there to go ironically see a screening of Tron legacy. Cause I missed it on its initial theatrical run. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. My dad had a stroke, so we didn't get to see it in the theater. Oh wow. shit. I'm sorry. He's fine now. I oh, live in the same good, apartment good. as he is, but um so we missed it in the, that run so i flew down there for just to to see it in the theater and i'm leaving lax to get an uber to go to universal hollywood and i get a message from tony hey you want to help me with a song yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> i'm sitting there waiting for like the uber and discussing all the different like everything about it and stuff like that and then Finally, when I got home after that weekend, I sketched it out, starting with the sousaphone bass line. Because, like, I don't know, I know a lot of different types of, like, instrumentation. So I'm like, well, I know my instrumentation. I'll lay that down first and then start building the parts for what I have. So I just started with, okay, here's the chords. And then boom, 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 boom for each chord. Just because it's a bouncy rhythm. It works with everything. And so that took a good couple of days just to get the chord structure laid out because it's not I'm used to like four chord dance tunes where <laughs> yeah. it's really simple and basic. And then suddenly, you know, here's this song with all these like seventh chords and jazz chords thrown in and weird key shifts and stuff like that. <laughs> but I think. Overall, considering that all of it is digital, there isn't, I think maybe like a, one instrument was recorded live, but everything is all Wh done. Which instrument? With, I think it was like a shaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like even the tambourine, I, I recorded all the percussion <laughs> way late at night. So, ah. and I live on the third floor of an apartment. So mm. the last thing you want to hear when you live on the third, when you live in an apartment is some jackass recording a tambourine at two in the morning. You don't need that in your life. Yeah, so I, I believe I believe it was John Oliver who said it best. Democracy is like a tambourine. Not everyone can be trusted with it. <laughs> <laughs> and so I like I just sat there. I have an octopad, a Roland octopad. And I knew from the beginning I was going to play it like a marching snare drum because a lot of those processional parades have marching instruments because they have to move. So I'm like, okay, so I'll record like marching bass drum and like hand cymbals, stuff like that, instead of doing a drum set. So I had that from the beginning, and then I pretty much, once it was all laid out, just played it all in in one take and kept it. Oh, nice. Nice. Um, and, uh, and, and this being my, uh, excuse me, sorry, wait, damn, sneeze coming on, sorry, <laughs> can't decide. Um, this this being my first comedy recording in almost a decade, 
I wanted to have as much fun with it as humanly possible. Like, it, and in Tom's songs, this, particularly this one, he would often go on these fun little asides and digressions. And I kind of wanted to capture that musically here. I love the idea of starting it like an old 78 RPM record. Yeah, with, I love that um, effect. With, with, with the heavy piano chords sounding like an old timey silent melodrama, sort of. That, that, that was the direction I gave Jacob. Uh, I love the idea that that then on the line, but don't you worry, it seamlessly crossfades from that shitty old recording of a vocal to a nice crystal clear recording that goes for the rest of it. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to pepper the whole thing with as many whimsical flourishes, you might say, as I could. Like, you know, it, it, it was just an attitude of why not? Like, why not record the French fried potatoes line in a bad Southern, slightly Cajun <laughs> accent? Uh, why not sing, just sing out a TDM when you see that ICBM in like a preacher's voice with a booming cathedral reverb? Um, why not sing down by the old maelstrom in a bad Tom Waits impression? That was, th that whole thing was, <laughs> that's what I was going for at least. That was, that was my, I, 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 I've been doing kind of a Tom Waits voice just to amuse myself. You know, down by the old man, that. And I always wanted an excuse to use it in a song. So why not pay tribute to the other piano playing Tom who writes really dark songs. And yeah, I remember uh, when this, when I hit that segment, I remember cause it was, that's the one part of the song that's in three, four. Mm. So I, cause I didn't know what the voices you were going to do were. <laughs> so I just played that like almost, what is it? My inspiration for that was the, when I was a young warthog bit. Ah, in yes. The Lion of King. <laughs> That was sort of my okay brass trio with heavy emphasis on the tuba to really get like that <laughs> cumbersome sound. I always, I always thought Tom Waits should should do a cover of "Feed the Birds" from Mary Poppins. <laughs> I just think it would suit him so. Early each day to the steps of St. Paul. You know, just he, he specializes in songs about downtrodden people, so why not? That and, would be pretty um, cool. I, I should also say, I, I, as as I'm sure uh, listeners who are familiar with the original know or noticed, I changed a couple of lyrics here and there. Um, I updated the amount of hunks of well done steak yes. in the original. In the original track, it was nearly three billion, and now it's over eight billion because that's how much the population has grown in the last sixty five years. We're kind of doomed, but um, and of course, in the last verse. I won't repeat it here, but, you know, Mr. Lehrer was a man of his time, and there was one line in the original that used two terms for certain indigenous peoples that are both now very much considered slurps that do not fly today. So I thought the best way to change that line would be to every billionaire and every average Joe. Just illustrating how if everyone dies, everyone dies. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our, your precious money won't save you, Elon. But I was literally going to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, Isn't and, it weird how, sorry to interject, but like. No, please. There's a song by Corky and the Juice Pigs, the title of which is that yeah. word you refer yeah. to. And it's one of them, yeah. I'm the only gay blank. Isn't it interesting how when that song first came out, the controversial word in that sentence was, was gay. gay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now it completely it, flipped. And now it's like, yeah, the, the gay part isn't the controversial part anymore. You That's know, you, you know, the, the, that song, <laughs> that song would work if you just changed the slur to Inuit that, that yeah. I'm the only gay Inuit in my tribe. It, it's same cadence of yeah. syllables. It would, it would work fine. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and another flourish I threw in there at the end, and, and I wasn't planning to do this, but I just had the idea while I was editing it, and I was like, why the hell not, um, was the countdown at the end. And I'm very proud of how I was able to time that to speed up on 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, then a long pause before the 1, and then the immediate sound effect of a nuclear blast at the end. It's just perfect way to end it, I thought. <laughs> yeah, it works beautifully. So basically, um, this song has everything I love about a Tony Goldmark comedy song. <laughs> and I would list off what they are. Well, thank but you. you literally did like five minutes ago when you were saying well, there this, you go. this is the Tom Waits and all the things. It's like, it's like, and like, you know, you didn't, Devo didn't specifically put this on the printing of the CD, but I consider like 
Jello shots to be like, you know, bonus track. Like that's, you know, it's it was just like you saw, oh, we have 26 tracks and there's room, but we might as well make it a a good old 27. Why and not? Just throw Jello shots on the end because it certainly fits with everything else on here. So, so Jello shots is the bonus track, but like Tony Goldmark's We Will All Go Together When We Go is the, you know, football player crossing the end zone freaking spiking the football victory dance of this album this is the best well, track you. ever oh, to possibly end this album on out of an amazing freaking album that still blows my mind that that it exists and it's like it's like oh, oh i know right, take us home tony this album is so good it's so goddamn good I've tony literally to gave us the atomic bomb that blows up at the end of this album <laughs> everybody like that's how good this album is yeah <laughs> So Jello Shots is kind of a denouement on the album. Right, right. It's it's, <laughs> it's, the, it's the little it's the it's the little um it, it, it's it's the breath mint at the it's end the of the po- It's the post credit scene of the Tom sure. Lehrer and, and speaking of that, okay, sorry, but everyone's going completely balls crazy about Steamboat Willie this week. Man, <laughs> Tom Lehrer's stuff has been in public domain for over a year. Where's the Tom Lehrer horror movie? I can yeah, do that. Come on. <laughs> I will hold your hand in mine. I will. Do, I know? can do that. I will totally do that. The Irish Ballad. Come on. Where's the Tom Lehrer horror movie? Oppenheimer. We got a theme song. Come on. To <laughs> keep more than to... seven hunters and a count. We need a, somebody in a scary Tom Lehrer mask to come out. You know, there's, there's there's nothing scary about about Winnie the Pooh that the the no. horror. He's just some the guy. Scariest in a bunch part. Of they, they should just up the ante and call it Winnie the shit. Yeah, the exactly. The scariest part of that movie Coconuts is how much don't it Winnie sucks. the shit. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry, Jacob. <laughs> like, the scariest part of that Winnie the Pooh horror movie is that it exists. Yeah. They should call it Winnie the Coconut Pooh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just, you know, I could... It's it's like I I could say more words, but basically, if you just you know had me go like like you know gesturing towards like, the existence of this again? song that Tony made, like that's basically like how how fucking cool is this song? This is amazing. It's woo, you know, and and also because uh, I managed to get the very last slot of the year of 2023, uh, appropriately enough, you know, end of the year, end of the world. Um, I, uh, not only is it the last track, is that the almost last track on, uh, on the Tom Lehrer tribute CD, it's also going to be the last track on the January, February, or, or the, the November, December bump, uh, album. Then. No, mine but, is. Oh, it is. Oh, well, yeah. Right, okay. Oh, well, <laughs> but, can't win. Whatever. <laughs> it's going to be the second to last track on this album too. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, well, what, so, what are you same position. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we've beaten this horse enough, I think. Um, <laughs> do you have anything you'd like to plug? Uh, Escape from Tomorrow. My, um, Escape from no. Tomorrow? Oh, th- no. What, what the that hell? movie also sucks. Don't obvious. plug that movie. <laughs> sorry. I, I shouldn't. The last My thing we want to do is encourage people to, to you know, give Disney's money to, for things. movies that uh, were made using copyrighted Disney things without their permission. My because- stupid, dumb brain. Nobody, nobody on the internet ever does nope. anything with copyrighted Never. characters without express, express consent of the people who created them. We don't Never. have literally hundreds of songs about pop culture things on the Fump. Hell no. <laughs> uh, Escape from Vault Disney is my podcast. Uh, I, I already talked about it at length earlier, but I'll just say it again. It's a it's a podcast where me and my guests review movies, TV shows, and short films available on Disney Plus, chosen mostly completely at random. Uh, Jacob's been on it, Luke's been on it, Devo's been on it. Uh, most recent episode was on the Arendelle Castle Yule Log Cut Paper Edition, and the next episode, which should hopefully be out next weekend, will be on Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yes, I know it's January. It takes me a while to edit this show because I'm a stupid perfectionist. All right. There, yeah, that's it's still place. there in the parks. It counts. Yeah, Fire Mansion Holiday is still up, so it still counts. Yeah. <laughs> this is and th- th- no offense to <laughs> any of the co-hosts of of my three podcasts, but Escape from Vault Disney is my favorite podcast. It is the best podcast. Honestly, oh, it's, it's, it's just it's up there for me too. I don't know if it's my all time favorite of what I'm listening to right now, but it's up there. 
I really enjoy that podcast. Thank you so much, Devo. Uh, Jacob, what, what do you have to plug? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I did, in fact, release a 10th anniversary live album called Live in the Moment. You can find that on my Bandcamp, bandcamp.com slash close to the sun. And other than that, I've been doing, I started doing ride reviews since Tony doesn't do some jerk with a camera anymore. Yeah. And a few people have shown up in the wake of that. And I figured, well, instead of bugging Tony to review the rides I wanted to see, <laughs> I'll just do it myself. So I've talked about. Um, let's see, to date, the Indiana Jones Adventure, um, Rock and Roller Coaster, which had a cameo from both Tony and Luke, and Unexpected Luke appeared, and I was very happy to use that take. (laughs) That's right. Um, I've done uh, Extraterrestrial Alien Encounter. There was a review of, uh, I believe just recently, I covered all of the Twilight Zone Towers of Terror. All of them. So that is, of course... Florida, California, Tokyo, the one in Japan, and then the iterations that came after that updated those. So it's a good two-parter video that it took me a good while to make. And I'm working on a few other reviews, namely the ride I work at called Wings Over Washington, and then a few others afterwards may or may not have a giant mega review of Space Mountain coming soon. So so that that's, that's what appeared- I've been up to. That that appearance I was that was me. I was like suddenly I sh- I walk in and I do an impersonation of Gilbert Gottfried, right? Um, I believe for the yes. um, cause yeah, like I had for the longest time I had joked that because Rock and Roller Coaster, you can't talk about Rock and Roller Coaster without talking about Sunset Boulevard and what's next to it, Tower of Terror. So of course I had the joke of you know. What opened with the park was the new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, and then Tony which is like, a reference, no, God no, <laughs> which is a reference to a some jerk video I I did, which it, it would take too long to explain, but but it was yeah, <laughs> yeah, and then just after Tony just no, 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 and then Luke just walks over no, <laughs> no, <laughs> like the as so soon it was as I a, saw it was an take. Yeah, an unexpected Gilbert Gottfried impression. And I do that because if there's one thing I love more than content that features an Agatha, it's content that features a surprise Gilbert Gottfried impression. So if you yeah. can find <laughs> anything with a surprise Gilbert Gottfried impression in it, <laughs> you, you know, consume that oh, as well as the surprise, surprise Agatha. Yes. <laughs> but, but Luke, I don't know why you're saying that because, like I said, the most recent episode of Escape from Vault Disney on the Arendelle Castle Yule Log Cut Paper Edition is just an ordinary, delightful it's a little completely conversation. Normal that we episode. Had. Completely normal episode. Oh, you know what? It, normal I just episode. Must be thinking about a year ago when you did right. the other Yule Log. When, when we did the other Yule Log, which oh. didn't have Agatha and Gilbert in it, but this is completely different from that, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it has it has it has uh, Morgan Funder and and Doggins and Kyle and, Carosa and Kyle Carosa. Yes, yes, and they and it's an excellent discussion about this amazing. Uh, what's her name? Brittany Lee. Brittany Lee, a development Lee. artist at yes. uh, a visual development artist at Disney who created this Arendelle Castle Yule Log Cut Paper Edition. Excellent, and that's and like all we talked about. Final thing to plug. Um, I actually just before this just finished recording. An episode of the amazing Micah Hirsch's podcast, The Emperor's New Podcast. I can't remember if that's the proper title off the top of my head. I'm sure he'll correct me in chat. We just did another episode about Once Upon a Studio with the two directors of that short. So that'll be coming out this weekend. Very cool. Very cool. I love that short so much. All right. So great. All right, uh, let's do some news. Uh, Tony and Jacob, are you guys going to stick around for the rest of the show, or you have to check sure, off? Sure, why not? Uh, okay. I'll yeah, stick around, not? sure. All right, let's do some news. This is the fault. But it isn't too hard. I've got the liar's clue and the biggest parody. Some video game versions I can play on my screen. 24 and Buster said I like those properties. And this got the wise clue, because I get the charities. Of course, I have the movie and the documentary, too. And this is for everyone who says I don't have a clue. And in the end, when I was facing a fate worse than death, ah, she became a wraith of joy and rescued me and set us free. Not bad for the first season of Molly McGee. I mean, when it comes down to it, you kids are jiggy, crunk, trill, funky fresh, and stupid dead. No, no, no. Morning with your parents, morning, morning with your parents, it's a morning. That's the Funny Music Project at thefump.com. 
T H E F U M P dot com. Now don't you bury the gauge. Bury the gauge at twilight. Boy. Sorry. Time for funny music news. Something, something, something. In the news, the Via Bella Kickstarter for their album Live and Germany is now fully funded. They are up to $3,756 of their $3,500 goal. They still have five days to go. So if you have not gotten into their Kickstarter yet, you still have some time. Go to kickstarter.com, search for Via Bella. That's two words, and this is uh, Rand and Aaron Bellavia, Rand of Ookla the Mock fame. He's one half of Ookla, and uh, his wife Aaron. And they do some good stuff. All right. Dr. Demento's Funny 25 was last weekend. Uh, If you haven't seen the results or haven't listened to the show yet, this will be spoilers. But uh, I wanted to run down a couple of things and compare them to Jeff's predictions, which we did not talk about last week. Um, Only a handful of Fump songs this year. One of which was me at number 25 with Yo Sam. So, yay! Yay! Should have been higher on the list. Uh, Jeff predicted it at number 20, but what are you going to do? I'll take 25. It's fine. Uh, the next Fump appearance is, in fact, there's three more Fump appearances, and they are all by Knuckleheads. So, father son comedy rap carrying the Fump once again. Uh, number 16, they had Let's Be Pirates which Jeff predicted was going to be number 13. Uh, Number five, Party With Your Parents, which you just heard a clip of. And number two, Brush Your Teeth and Go to Sleep. Um, For Jeff's predictions, everything from seven up was exactly correct. Down, things were a little off. And there was only one song that uh, was not predicted to make the list. Uh, Shaving Cream at number 20 was not on Jeff's list. Instead, he had um, Montana by the Mothers at number 23. So, so Knuckleheads carrying the fump again. Congratulations, yes. Knuckleheads. They, they consistently make great work. They do. All right, that's all the news I got. Anybody have anything before tour dates? I'll take that as a no. On Sundays in Nashville, Tennessee, Steve Goody hosting at the Bluebird. On Sundays online, Two Sleeps. Mondays online, Steve Goody and Brad Tassel at virtualcomedyshow.com. On the 6th in Santa Cruz, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. On the 6th in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, Carla Ulbrich. On the 11th in Santa Rosa, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. On the 12th in Loletta, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. And on the 13th in Lakeport, California, Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction. And birthdays. Today, January 4th, is Art Paul Slosher's birthday. Happy birthday, Yay. Art Paul. Happy birthday. And coming up on... I just on... got a... Go ahead. I just... Uh, I can't remember if I explained this on a previous episode, but uh, I ordered some from some CDs of his from the past couple years, and he accidentally sent me two of the same one instead of the one he put out in 2023 so i just got in the mail this week that album uh it was called the x the xyz's of art paul schlosser so nice uh, and he also he also sent me a dvd i had no idea he put out a dvd so i'm interested oh, cool. to see what's on it when i get a <laughs> chance to <laughs> i didn't know he put out a dvd either it must be interesting yeah. uh other birthday coming up on the 6th on saturday adam english of ukla the mock the other half of Ooh. ukla all right beth yeah. So I got a new I got a new single too. You do. Give us a quick intro. We'll give it a listen. Well, it's it's this soothing meditation, you know, for when you really want to open yourself up like a vase. There it oh. is again, like a vase. Yes. It's well. It's it's a large it's, beneficial. It's me vase. going all new age and <laughs> shit, you know. So you know, it's supposed to. You're supposed to relax okay. and feel just serenity. Gotcha. All right. Here is. Bad Beth's Soothing Meditation by Bad Beth and Beyond. Now is the time to quiet your mind. 
slip into something comfortable and close your eyes. Allow yourself to feel heavy, sinking into your chair, your mattress, or in the bed of an El Camino. Release all tension by breathing from your diaphragm. Yes, you have a diaphragm. I don't care who you are, and you better learn how to use it. You can allow any thoughts to cross your mind. Then just let them go, the way you did with your dreams about being an astronaut someday. Allow any tension to melt away. Your buttocks relax, releasing any toxic residue. Relax your abdomen. No, really, stop sucking in your gut. You're not fooling anyone. If I wanted to get my Chippendale fix, I'd watch the Disney Channel. Your jaw and clenches, flopping open like you're ready to impress them all on a Tijuana donkey show. You're so heavy. You're sinking down, down, just like a submarine. That's it. You're gonna be a good little sub for me. Allow yourself to open your third eye. Okay, a little more, more. Just relax. This is only gonna hurt a little bit at first. Complete serenity just slides right in there. This complete state of Zen has you pegged as a disciple. You know what the sound of one hand clapping really means, so let's hope you brought some tissues. Imagine a warm, soft, golden light coming towards you. This golden stream is a current of sparkling energy, you sick bastard. This tranquility is just coming all over you. Don't even bother trying to wipe it off. Have you found release yet? You're safe with only a word, and you will awaken energized. Your internal batteries be charged. So many batteries. What are you gonna do with all of them? And can I have some? When you are ready, return to a wakefulness in five, four, three, two, one. Well, I don't know about anybody else, but I am in completely relaxed right now. You see, and that's because I didn't, I didn't uh, just do a countdown with a giant explosion. I just did right. all of that. <laughs> yeah. I feel so everyone much better knows, having heard that. Uh, everyone serenity. knows the most relaxing thing. The most relaxing thing is a nuclear bomb. Everyone yes. Knows. Everybody knows, but I, but you know, I, you know, nobody's perfect, you know. So I didn't end with a bomb. I just, you know, had a little. Nod to lucky man there, because if you listen to this song, you're going to be a very lucky man mm. <laughs> or woman. You know, it was kind of, you know, doing the, the keyboards, uh, you know, it's, I may not be like some kind of electronic musician. No, I went really retro that in the style of that Irish uh, singer Enya. Now, what nobody knows, they only know her first name. They don't know that her second name is Butt. Yeah. So, <laughs> Enya Butt. So in your butt. I love that Eddie Murphy track. That was. <laughs> you know, because it'll make you. Boogie in your butt. Yeah. In your butt. Put a tin can. Put a little. In your butt. In your butt. <laughs> put a little tiny man in your butt. <laughs> put an alligator. Yeah. I say, see you later. So that's you know I, I'm hoping to branch into some some kind of uh, another market you know and the nice thing is you know. You know what you get if you play new age music backwards? What? You what? know what you get? New age music. Right. <laughs> you know, okay. it's a, the satanic panic just totally like looked right over that. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going to I'm going to market this, you know, it's going to be where they 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 right in the in the aisles next to the pumpkin spice candles. That's, you know, it's going to sell uh, as well as any physical CD sells these days. I'm going to put them next to the 8-tracks. You know? <laughs> I think you're going to make a fortune. I think you could put out a whole album of this stuff. I think it'd be fantastic. I, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to call it Just Fucking Relax Already. <laughs> yes. <by Bad> Bad. <laughs> <laughs> you should sell it at Starbucks with all the other CDs there. Yeah. <laughs> 
Get yeah. your coffee and just fucking relax. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect. Like, sit down, tweak, and have some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. I think it's a great idea. I, th- I, I love to see yeah. I love to see artists branching out into into new directions. You know, like take take free Ritalin and chill. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, great stuff. Why? Well, I, I think it's I, I you know wrote that that was from the heart of my bottom. Mm. <laughs> I love everything Beth does. I love everything about yeah. Beth. Yeah. <laughs> <Just, laughs> oh. I have to keep trying, you know, because I, I've, I've got competition against this. There's this blonde bimbo out there. Her, her name is Beth Patterson. She's always like trying to take credit for my music, you know. So I got I got to keep a step ahead of her. She wrote a, a a story that's going to the fucking moon on Monday. It is literally going to the moon. It was it's getting launched? You know, it takes a while for stuff to get up there, but it's going to be on this lunar time time capsule. And it's going up on Monday, so wow. she she's driving to Cape Canaveral to go watch the lo- the, the rocket take off, and you know, like, oh, look at me, I, yeah, so my story's going up to the moon, you know. It's, but I, I know I know what her her car looks like. I know exactly how deep a penknife goes into a set of tires. <laughs> so you got her number. You're you're good. You're I, I got her number. I know where she lives. <laughs> so yeah, so there's a story going to the moon. Yeah, I, I yeah, wasn't she, aware of yeah, this. You know, she she wrote this story. It's on this. It's there was. It started with this project called Writers on the Moon. This woman who was a, a rocket scientist, and she writes uh, she writes fiction in her spare time. You know, that, that was one of the songs on my Futurama CD. We're Writers on the Moon. <laughs> writers, yeah. So she's got that. Uh, the payload is going up there, and uh, this this other guy who started this thing called the Lunar Codex. Uh, got in is what you know they call a stowaway. This guy Samuel Peralta, and so I'm one of the stowaways. So this this uh, anthology. I mean, not, I, I'm not one of the stowaways. I'm not. We know what you mean. No, yeah. no. Blonde is. She's she's on 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 this uh, in this anthology called Clarissa Dreams Redux. And what she doesn't want you to know, what she's never going to publicly blog, is that she wrote this wackadoodle piece of flash fiction when she was stoned out of her gourd. And then it ended up in this anthology. Now the anthology is going to the fucking moon, which goes to show you: use drugs, get ahead in life. You know, use drugs, you go to the moon. There you go. You can, you can win bicycle races by by. Uh, you can win the Tour de France by by using drugs, and you can have your your fiction put on the moon by using drugs. That just goes to show: use but drugs. My question is: there's nobody on the moon to read it. So uh, they're hoping it's. It's a time capsule. So after we all go together, when we go, yes. humanity is going to be gone. But, you know, there might be a couple of survivors. By this time, we're going to colonize the moon. And somebody's going to go, hey, look at this thing the size of a, of a nickel. I wonder what this does. Whoa, this is a really fucked up story. Hey, what's a nickel? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what you get from selling one billion Spotify uh, spins. <laughs> No, that that's that's really awesome. I hadn't heard about that, but the, yeah. pass on it's my not, congratulations to her. It's <laughs> that blonde bimbo, Beth Patterson. She sucks. <laughs> that, that, that's yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna follow her to Cape Canaveral. I'm gonna be watching her move, and, and I'm gonna get there first. And I'm I'm gonna videotape the rocket going up. Okay. Very cool. Well, good good luck keeping her in check. Oh, I'm totally. I'm gonna be. I'm, watching her and then I'm going to go to Orlando and I'm going to look for Steamboat Willie ah. Tony you need to have Beth on Escape from Vault Disney at some point I sh- I'm I'm getting <laughs> yeah. that impression very much so hard I, agree I, I, I very much agree at this point you, you've convinced me <laughs> you've passed the audition shall we say I'll- oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah suck it bland Beth <laughs> Uh, yes. that's all you know everything else that i want to plug is gonna have to i'm gonna plug it as soon as the funk cast is over if you know what okay. i mean okay sure that sounds fair yeah i was just gonna ask if you had anything else you wanted to plug but you know that's as far as i'm still con- con- continuing to to 
put some Bad Bath songs. Uh, eventually, I just realized that I've got 11 songs on the fump and a couple that I want to re-record. And it's like, holy shit, I've got enough to actually put out a, a you new have an Bad album. Bath Yeah. Yeah. Because some of that old, some of that, that Bad Bath stuff uh, on the previous record, it, you know, like a lot of stuff, you know, humor doesn't age well. You know, so, you know, things that, you know, that, that you can't say New Orleans like um, it's it, it, it literally means eaters of snow. And, you know, it's what we mean is here. It's, it's called snowballs. Everywhere else in the world is called snow cones. You know, so <laughs> we all go together when we go. We eat eating the, the balls of snow, you know, <laughs> but you can't say balls of snow anymore. You know, so <laughs> we just say eating balls. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, Way um, more appropriate. Yeah. All right. I mean, then again, in Seattle, we literally can give someone a bag of dicks, and that's a positive thing in Seattle. So, oh, can I can, can I get a gig? Can I get a? a I, I want a gig in Seattle. I want a gig. Come in out Seattle. to Seattle, man. Do yeah, it. I, yeah, can I, let can me I, know can if I you're come, out here. Can I come and work on your roller coaster? I, I it's a simulator, a, but absolutely, come on out here. Can, can I add some tracks to you know? I play a mean electric bazooki. <laughs> Beth rocks a mean bazooki. He, go, he thinks I'm kidding. Yeah. Go back and listen to, uh, if you haven't heard it on the thump, go back and listen to her explain, which is his, uh, the, I'm bl- who, what's the, that's a parody of, I'm blanking on, rock me like, rock a, me hurricane. like a hurricane. Rock you like a hurricane. About oh, hurricanes. Hurricanes yeah. hitting New Orleans and people mansplaining to her mm. about all the stuff. <laughs> and but it's not just course. mansplaining. It's just everybody's splaining. Yeah, everybody's splaining. Of, of all genders calling me up saying, do this, do that, come here. It's like if one, if, if one guy who kept saying, you got to come up to location redacted. If I'd done that, then I would have gone straight into the cone, been stuck in traffic for 16 hours and come home to water all over my floor. It's like, no. I've lived in New Orleans off and on for over 30 years. I know what happens. Stop! <laughs> I, I got a little carried away. So I was driving to Atlanta, and I voice to texted on my dashboard the entire lyrics to myself. And by the time I came home, I'm like, okay, fuck a bunch of this. I'm going to do her <laughs> So, and yeah, listen I- listen to that song on the thump. There are no guitars on it. All, all the rocking you hear is an electric bazooki, and it sounds amazing. <laughs> Nice. Land plane and say, well, technically there is a guitar because I also play bass on it. I'm okay. just like, you know, mm. don't take this wrong way, but fuck you. you know, but <laughs> there, there are no electric guitars. It's it's the it's electric bazooki, and then in in place of a uh, uh, of a guitar solo, uh, I had a friend come play sax uh, because it is about New Orleans. Yeah, it's great. It's one of my favorite songs ever. Ah. All right, let's do some feedback. Making the internet absolutely ridiculous. Dementia Radio. www.dementiaradio.org. Port 8027. Please hang up and try again. This is the part where there's feedback. 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 You know that segment of the show we do about now? Feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. <laughs> feedback all right uh first i want to make a note last year last last year last well i guess it was last year last week (laughs) i mentioned uh there was a comment by someone named rock and roll cashier who i didn't know who it was turns out that's Dizman from dead by 28 so that's who that was Ah. um the other comment we got on the fump was from danny d who says art carney also played santa in the 1970 jim henson special the great santa claus switch in which the wizard Cosmo Scam, also Carney, impersonates Santa to facilitate burglary. It was the first appearance of the puppet that later became Gonzo and has a framing device of Ed Sullivan reading to children. Wow. Oh, thank you, Danny. <laughs> uh, then we I've got heard a... of that, but I've never seen it. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like something that would be, be up your alley to watch. Yeah. And then we got several comments on YouTube. One from Super Love and Faith, who wrote, I love the thump. So great that you had Harv Mann on the show. Luke, Devo, and Steve, you guys are terrific. Thank you. Message comment from Zonarama. 
who says, Excellent. You three are very entertaining. Thanks for having Harv on the show. Doing the Santa Claus shuffle had me and the wife rocking. Thank you, Zonorama. And then two comments from Ken Sherlock, who said, Finally got a chance to listen to the Thump Lair CD, and it was as awesome as Devo has been stating for the last month, and I agree with him on Tony's track. Since Doctor Who specials is referenced, did anyone see the connection between the goblins from Ruby Road and the RPG uh, Kobloids Ate My Baby that inspired the Mikey Mason song of that name? I haven't seen that RPG, so I can't really comment I've, on... I've heard of it, but I don't know much about it. <laughs> Let's do a quick Googling image search and see. There's a There's a resemblance, I can see. But yeah, I don't doesn't look like it was an intentional thing, though. Um, Ken goes on. I spent way too much time trying to figure out where I heard the music in Kyle's song and appreciate the explanation, in, including that it was from a 50s commercial, which I didn't know. As I remember hearing the music a long time ago, I thought it was a college fight song and was stumped. Mike Tyson's punch out was made in 1987, so it was a long time ago. Though the music used in Kyle's song is played at the end after winning the game, which it was the perfect fit. Thank you, Ken. All right. And I do want to mention that A-Log did give me music for an intro, so we have a new intro for A-Log for the next time he comments. But he didn't comment this week, so you're going to have to wait to hear it. Ah. All right. And if the show isn't fucking long enough, we have a third song. Yeah. <sighs> Strap in, folks. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. It's a short song, <laughs> and there's not a whole hell of a lot to say about it. So um, here is... Let's fucking do it. Possibly the dumbest right. thing I've ever done. Uh, this is Mavity is Stupid by Devo Spice. make things fall down and the only reason was that the earth is round well suppose i didn't want to go down maybe i want to go up goodness knows that is gonna be tough because now i gotta go to the complete other side of the planet because it can't fall up can it i tried to understand it it stinks all around because all it wants to do is make things fall down and it all falls at the same speed that's dumb 32 feet per second where the heck is that from things with more mass should fall more fast but no mavity's just a pain in the ass oh look at me i'm mavity i'm Stupid! Oh, look at me, I'm Mavity, I'm stupid! I'm resigned to my fate, so I'll stay in plain words. If Mavity's so great, explain birds. It's a force that tries to drag everything down. So why does the moon keep going round and round? The sky is falling, sure enough, well it could be. And why ain't that stuff on the shelf where it should be? Right, cause my cat is an asshole, of course, and he's dazzled by Mavity's fanciful force. It goes on forever causing drag. That's dumb. It'll never stop until your boobs sag. That's dumb. Even men. That's dumb. So what I've done, here's a clue, kid. Hack the Wikipedia page and say stupid. Ooh, look at me, I'm Mavity, I'm Stupid! Oh, look at me, I'm Mavity, I'm stupid! Oh, look at me, I'm Mavity, I'm stupid! Oh, look at me, I'm Ma- So, <sighs> this is a song that's going to make zero sense unless you've been watching Doctor Who. If you haven't seen Doctor <laughs> Who, I'm sure you're going to be like, what the hell just happened? So <laughs> minor spoilers for recent Doctor Who episodes in one. Of, and I believe it was the second special. Um, the TARDIS is out of control, as it very often is. It crash lands in a tree above Sir Isaac Newton. And Donna leans out and says, you of all people should appreciate the gravity of the situation. You know, and Doctor's like, oh, don't do that, you know, and then they fly away. And then they cut to Sir Isaac Newton, and he's like, what was that wonderful word? Shravity, havity, mavity, which changes the timeline. <laughs> so mm. later in the episode, the Doctor says, we have gravity, and, and Donna goes, what? And he goes, oh, mavity. And... She understands it then, and then later on she says, we have air, we have mavity. You know, it's, so it's, and then in the 
latest episode, he, the doctor invented these gloves, and he's like, all the Mavity is in the gloves. So it's like, it's just a thing now on the show. They say Mavity instead of Gravity. So I'm watching this, and I'm like, I could easily update my song Gravity is Stupid and change it to Mavity is Stupid. And I'm like, that's a stupid idea. Should I do it? Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> so there you have it, folks. <laughs> Updated my song for the new timeline. Mavity is stupid. Yay. Yay. Parallel, parallel timelines going on. So did you bother <laughs> actually re-recording the whole song or did you just no. re-record the Mavity? <laughs> no, I punched in the word Mavity wherever I could. Um, Good. <laughs> It's, I literally, I opened the old project file. I recorded, I had to, sometimes I had to you do a whole phrase, like, because I couldn't just punch in the word Mavity. Uh, like, the, for the first time, Mavity is just a pain in the ass. I did that entire phrase. But um, the chorus, I think I just did Mavity, I'm stupid. You know, I think I, I think I did do the whole well, choruses. But well, I mean, I mean, T <laughs> is, is a hard consonant. So you could have. You, you could have literally just re-recorded Mava and and easily edited it in just with the same T. See, that but... might have been funnier if I just did it like yeah. without even trying to match it. Just go Mavity, or you know, and then yes. place that in place, <laughs> or just do it completely deadpan. Yeah, Mavity, Mavity, <laughs> Appleton. That's a joke for Luke. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a song. It keeps my streak alive. Uh, which is probably going to end next uh, period anyway. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> the streak he's referring to is that he has he appears on at least one track on every Fump CD. Yes, ah. since the beginning. So I'm I'm on the first hundred and two Fump CDs in some way, shape, or form. Um, you know, so sometimes I don't have a song, but I have a guest appearance on somebody else's song, right, or right, something right. like that. Um. But yeah, I don't, I, I, we are, the schedule, the FUMP schedule has been full for a very long time, and we are currently scheduling, uh, yeah, Jan January and February are both booked solid, and there are two dates already taken in March, so, I mean, I could take a Sunday slot in, in there, but I don't want to, I don't want to force anything, I have, um, I might need to, to abandon my uh, January sixteenth slot. So oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I'll, but... I'll nab a spot for another ten years in the future when you <laughs> okay. decide to do a Stan Freeberg tribute album or something. All right, uh, <laughs> Luke. I'll just there's, there's a Steve Goody Sunday slot. I'll just move him into Tuesday to take your spot. Let me know for sure. Definitely when you know. Okay. I'll pop up on a Fump album when when they decide to do the Fump does Ninja Sex Party. I'll show up for a cover of one of those yes! songs. Ninja Sex Party. Well, um, e Insane Ian produced a a cover album a couple years ago, of uh, well, or no, there was, you go. was that him? Yeah, that was. Yeah, him. that was him. Um, yeah, I have a song on that too. I did Rhinoceratops versus Super Puma. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I, sing, I love I that band. On that. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually planning to put out a covers album because uh, after I did after I did new math for the Tom Lair album, um, I, I was I was like, wow, I've done you know a handful of covers. Let me see what I've done, and I actually made a whole list of of all the cover songs I've done over the years. And I was like, I've got enough for a full album. Maybe I should just put out an album of covers. So I thought, so that's my plan right now. And there's two new songs I'm going to record for for this project. Um, I talked about it on the Insider in detail. So if you want more detail, go listen to the January ep no, no the December episode of the Insider, which uh, I've should been planning be... a I've been planning a uh, a covers album for many years now, and um, I mean it took me forever just to get. Uh, uh, needlessly meta put out, so I don't know how long it'll be before I get this one out. But um, my uh, my my title for it is nonstop coverage. <laughs> nice. My title is going to be cover up, and it's the it's going to be um, you you remember on Heroes like that dude had like the string that connected all the stuff. Like I want to take a picture of that and like connect like pictures of all the people I'm covering and or, or in some, something like that. I'll probably be taken in the corner over there. A big so, Pepe Sylvia board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
So, Dude, especially if like somebody like played on somebody else's record, you know, that they're connected by one common musician. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to find actual connections between them. What yeah. does it mean? <laughs> well, who, who got it from Agnes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> who got it from Agatha? Who got ah! All along. Uh, all right all right i have nothing else to say about this stupid song i did um <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I got nothing um so yeah so let's do what's next Te it always screws me up when we get a third song let's do teasing teasing he's a teasing kind of guy and i have a job yeah! All right, now let me see if tomorrow's song is posted or if I have to call this douchebag. Because <laughs> he promised me he would get it posted. Yeah, it looks like it's posted. Yes, it's posted. Okay. Tomorrow's song is by Jeff Whitmire. Yay! Yay! And, uh, oh, God, it's, it's a song about an absolutely fantastic zombie movie. No spoilers. Um, and Tuesday song is by Via Bella, fresh off Woo! their new Kickstarter campaign. And this week's Spotify playlist topic is work because my job went bye bye. So mm. I'm going to do songs about, I'm going to play songs about day jobs and shit. All right, Beth, plug yourself one more time. What? In front of all these people? <laughs> sure. Yes. <laughs> Oh, okay. Why do you well, think the, we're here? Yeah, because we're here to roll the bones. Okay, that uh, I'm I'm working on on cleaning up my my Facebook page because uh, this this speaking of douchebags, a number of years ago, this douchebag like hacked my page. Now this this is not a joke. He and used it to he was posing as me and using it as a platform from some speech that was so like not cool that even I noticed. Ah. So I'm, I'm trying to make sure that that's all gone. Before I tell people that that I do have a bad Beth and Beyond Facebook page, just don't scroll down too many years. But it's uh, the handle is Show Me on the Doll sixty nine, and uh, if you want to know what that stupid bimbo is up to, uh, that that's always like trying to take credit for for my work. She had the bright idea of making her Facebook handle Bethodist. And the joke's on her because everybody thinks it's just Methodist with a typo. Ha, <laughs> joke's on her. You know, so people have to type in like Beth Patterson, music, bazooki, blah de blah you know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but uh, so that's where, where you could find her. But you don't want to look for her. You want to look at sh ha the, the handle is show me on the doll 69. Uh, if that's, that's the Facebook page for Bad Beth and Beyond. Of All course, right. You know, now that that's, that's gone. Um, I think I'm just going to change the call the album title Beth and Body Works. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Tony, plug yourself one more time. I am on Twitter at Tony Goldmark. Uh, I have a Facebook group, Some Jerk with a Fan Club. Uh, I have three seasons of my uh, former video series that was mentioned earlier, Some Jerk with a Camera, on my YouTube page, youtube.com slash Tony Goldmark. And, of course, I have my podcast, Escape from Vault Disney, wherever podcasts aren't sold. Jacob, plug yourself one more time. All right. You can find me at Close to the Sun on Bandcamp. Just look for a white pentagon. That's me. You'll hear all the new music I've done, including my new live album, Live in the Moment. Or you can go on YouTube and go to RCT3 is Epic. And you can find all the episodes of my ride review show that has no name, as well as any other silly things that I might be doing. All right. And Devo Spice is at devospice.com. And uh, I, I may do a live stream concert. If I do, it'll probably be on Tuesdays because they were telling me other people are doing Monday nights. So um, possibly Tuesday. Hey, Devo, for that. is Chuck in the chat? She is not. Oh, She's. Okay. I haven't seen her post anywhere or anything since her birthday. She, she just kind of turned 18 and disappeared. <laughs> 
And she's still oh, around. Your Your Honor, that's you know that's the official story. Yeah, she's posting some stuff on Twitter, so okay. I know she still exists. So. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. Yeah, that 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 doesn't sound great. Out of no, it, yeah, really. <laughs> she Her, turned eight. That that's a title for this episode. Yeah. She turned eighteen and disappeared. Yeah, her her birthday was on January first as well. So happy oh, okay. birthday, Chuck! All right, yeah. let's get out of here. Hi, Qbert. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Funny Music Podcast. I'm Devo Spice. I'm Luke Ski, and there's Qbert. Hey, and then look, there's Tony. Hey. And I'm Beth. Tony Goldmark. Thank, Thank you for this. listening to the Funny Music Podcast. Bye. You can listen live every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 Pacific at DementiaRadio.org and join us in the chat or subscribe to the podcast feed. Look us up on iTunes and be sure to leave us a review. Feedback for the show can be sent to info at the funk.com. The Funny Music Podcast is a production of Fidem Interactive, LLC, released under a Creative Commons share-alike license. Tell your friends. Tell your enemies. Shout it to random people on the street. And be sure to visit thefump.com for the latest funny songs. Tune in next week where you'll hear Luke Ski say... Um... I forgot that I was supposed to think of something. So, Tony, say something wacky. Uh, it's, per- it's spelled hen3ry. The three is silent, you see. <laughs>